Hi, everyone, and welcome. It is the Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar. It is Saturday, October the 20th, 2018. And today our channel is Jim, who's going to be continuing from last week with his discussions of the things that went on in Machu Picchu, as well as channeling uh, many different beings and, and sharing with us information. Uh, just to tell you who we have in our room today, we have Kathleen, uh, Christine, Dave, Don, Ian, we have Jay, Lucia, Marlene, Pamela. We have a big room today. Sesh, Shear, Stephanie, Steve, Temple, and Ruth. And then Jim, who do you have in your room? I have Angie and Barbara. Logan, who is here from in Lafayette, Indiana. And I have Brian here on the other side from Lafayette, Indiana. And I have Lydia and uh, Erica. And who else is back there? Chris Meath. Anybody else back there? Nope, that's no. it. And then I have David over here and Ray. So we have a lot in our room too. And we're actually expecting, we were expecting even more. So yeah, we've got Stephanie coming in for, through the car phone. So she's driving. Yeah. She's here. And Reinhard just, uh, Reinhard just came in as well on our okay, side. Very so, good. Excellent. Yeah. So just so everybody knows, let me just clip back. This is the Saturday Human Colony webinar. This is a paid webinar, and it is uh, the people that are in the room here in the Google Room are in the room because they are members of the Hukalo Club. Um, if you would like to be a member of Club Hukalo, you can go to hukalo.org forward slash webinars, and you can help support Human Colony and all of the work that we're doing. Also on Friday nights, we have the Hukalo Channeling Practice class. It's Friday afternoon, but Ian, why don't you tell about it? Sure. This is Ian, and um, every Friday night at 4.30 Eastern time, um, I host a call that's the weekly channeling practice call. Uh, we have a Facebook page called Hukalo Channeling Practice, and it's free to join. So you can just join the group and participate on the call every Friday night, and it's a safe place for all of us uh, would-be channelers to get together and practice our channeling and discuss methods and things like that. Perfect. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah, perfect. And then Ruth does something once a week, but I don't know, is yours open for the public, Ruth, or not? Well, originally it was for the people who attended the Sedona and Dansville workshops with Jim and Max mm -hmm. and everyone, but actually now we're getting people who weren't, and it's great. So this, this is Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. EST. I only post the link in the workshop group so what group do they need to join to be in that workshop? They would have to join the, what was that, Nucolo Workshop Tribe. I don't remember the exact name, but. Okay, I think it's Hukalo Tribe and Hukalo Tribe and Workshop or something like that. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes, so, yes, something like that. Yeah, so, so when, when is yeah. it? It's, it's Wednesday, Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, perfect. It's great middle of the week you know, get together and we do channeling and blessings and just talk and it's really cool. So yes, if anybody, especially from the workshops, would like to join that, that would be awesome. Okay, perfect. Thank you for asking. Appreciate no that. Problem. So we have some people that want to do a blessing and we're going to, we have two people in our room, two people in your room. We're going to start with Temple. Temple, why don't you go ahead? No shot to tie your cool or no shukalea tata. Puya nati to kubosh nanata. Kulo o a hanata kali, kiata toya madia tataka. Mosia tatu pukulu junana. Nayata haya koya hana. Ho haya boya tatia. Mosia tata puka de la ana. Suayataya nataka hana. Pula e ki kakakayata ana si waha. No ho clua beatiata. Moya sata ya no hanati data. Kolo shotiana, nasiata, hasha qua hanatia boyata. Numa tiatana. Namaste. We are humanoid just like you and have emotions and spiritual blessings just as you have. We want you to be examples one to another of goodness and kindness, compassion and love. 
And we hope and pray that one day we will be able to reach through this thread of separation and become one and understand each other in a way that is most beautiful. This kind of communication and community is needed in both the galaxy and on your world. We give, give you much blessings and pray for you continually. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dave, go ahead. Droho na shiwaka ndaha niwa wo e shuto ana uhokaha ewa shatura na huata yewa ana hiwa he shantura preshon da ve awan zaheya na huata a shiwanda ewa ha e na ewa ka e u ashanatua. It is true, you must work diligently, but also you must enjoy your work and must reach out and let people know with love and compassion that you are with them in thought and spirit. You cannot forget your fellow man while your mission goes forward, but you must include them with your energy. You must show them what you are doing so that they may be enlightened and understand that God is with you and that you are doing the work he has for you and they may join in as well. Thank you. Thank you. And then in your room, we have uh, Barbara. Go ahead, Barbara. Barbara. Although we do not relate to you the same as others, we still have thoughts of kindness and compassion. Your ideas of love are slightly different, but yet they permeate our thought process, and we know that it is something valuable and good for you in a way that it is also good for us. We change not directly, but we change our thoughts and guide them toward you so that you may have the energy to bring forth a greater existence for yourself. And we have done so for ourselves, but we also must have your cooperation in order for us to succeed in all ways. We are dependent on you in some ways to make changes even in our world. So we wish you all the best in yours. Thank you. And last but not least, we have a special guest who's been back, back after a long time. Go ahead, Brian. Okay. <clears throat> it's been a while, hasn't it? Yes. Oh. Too long, Brian. But we'll forgive you for that. Go ahead. Celia Katana sa takoto Celia tane ya katko atatia sani ke kasa kasa koto na ne kalakato sun tu tu achikete. Nana sakat kununi lagno sapati kat kata sakatula nane kate toa sani akada nonon shekakam manason kola kayaka yala so to toa niakato. There is light in every corner of the universe, and people are dependent on it to survive, to bring themselves out of the darkness, to arise and become closer to God to ascend and become greater beings than what they are at this moment. This rising happens everywhere and continuously. We ask that you continue rising. We know that you will, but let us speed it up so that we can help you to become part of this, our great neighborhood, our great community, our great advisory if you will so that we may all learn together work together 
and survive together. It is a time of great importance for your people to continue and to rise. We know that you are dependent one with another, but remember this, we are all connected and we can help you rise as well as we pull up our end of the bargain and keep the light shining. God is with you, and so are we. Namaste. So, welcome back, Jim. Thank you Thank for you. this uh, second week in a row webinar. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's been you've been back for two weeks now. Is there any? Because we did talk a little bit about Machu Picchu last week, but is there anything more that you've sort of been well, able to integrate, or more realizations that you've had that you'd like to share at this moment? Well, we're we're putting together how we want to present all the information that we that we received when we were there, and it's going to be it, there's a lot of information. And it's going to have to be put together in a way that's um, uh, beneficial to people and interesting. And I think that um, at this point, we're just working on getting that together. And and uh, we're going to have it edited and put into a, a little uh, documentary. And that's going to have to, we're going to have to do a lot of work on that because there's some rough edges. So... Uh, but at this point, I'm very happy about the information, yep. very happy about all the things that came through. And I wouldn't trade that experience for anything, even though it was really, really challenging. Mm -hmm. It was not like the vacation laying on the beach and drinking uh, alcohol, <laughs> alcohol with a, uh, an umbrella in it. It's more like <laughs> grab the umbrella. We need it for other reasons so <laughs> um, yes and and we had a hard time breathing and it takes a while I just learned that it takes so much time to get reacclimated to the atmosphere that we're in we were in so many different high altitudes that your body sort of changes and when you get back you're sort of like Oh, the air is so heavy. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but it's all right. It's a good thing. I'd prefer it <laughs> rather than gasping for breath in the middle of the night. So Yeah, I can imagine. Okay, and, so is there anything else you wanted to share before we uh, go forward? Or Well, I wanted to share that Brian and Logan are here and Owen is upstairs. And... Um, I, I welcome them to my home and to the webinar today. I would like Logan, who is one of the youngest channelers I've ever heard of in my entire life. He started channeling at what age? 10? 10. 10. Started okay. channeling at age 10, and we yeah. had him on the webinar once before, and now he's 13. So I'd like him to to do a little channeling for us to open up the um, the day. Is he going to talk right with everybody else? <laughs> are, you, are you taking questions, Logan, or no? Here, I'll take sure. questions. So okay. I will let him sit in my chair for a moment. Perfect. So before we start, Logan, we're going to do like a quick little interview with you, just okay. so people who haven't ever seen you before know who you are. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, well, my name's Karen, and I host the weekly webinar, so nice to meet you. Um... Where do I start? I am Logan. Hello. Hello. Um, being started coming in contact with me, I'd say around like nine or ten. I really started channeling at ten because like, I don't know, they just really wanted to come through after a while. So I started letting them. I got into a trance, like a deep trance around eleven or twelve. That's when they really started to come through. So I've kind of been adjusting to the energies from a time period of 11 or 12 to 13 so yeah they tell me i'm ready so that's yeah. cool that's so awesome you, so they started coming through like when you were 11 but were you do you have any memories of it before that or was it all really starting at that moment for you well it really started happening like the deep trance at 11 or 12 because when i was 10 or younger like the only time that i'd ever come in contact with beings was like in my dreams Right. I had one, like a red robe came through the register, 
and I tried to find it because I didn't know what it was at the time. But apparently I visited like the colonies, which was pretty cool. But I had a uh, somewhat of an encounter one time where it was a little reptilian under my desk at home. So that was fun. Oh, that's funny. Did you see him with your physical eyes? Yeah. Oh, wow. Awesome. Did you were able to talk to him or? See, I was terrified at the time because I didn't know what it was. So yeah. the only thing that I did, it didn't move, but it just kind of stayed there for a good like two hours until I fell asleep. But I just didn't move. I just stared at it for like one or two hours because I didn't know what it was going to do. Yeah. But you did still fall asleep while you're able to, you were, you were able to feel comfortable enough to go to sleep. with mm. So do you continue to have like face-to-face -face, uh, uh, interactions with beings or now is it mostly through trance and through channeling? It's usually through trance or dream time. The mm. only time that I'll ever see beings is either out of the corner of my eyes or just in the dream. Right. Do your friends have the same as you? Do you know anybody else on your age group that's having this as well? Not, I mean, I know my friends are aware that there is, you know, a life out there, but I don't know anybody who's actually had an encounter. Right. Right. Cool. And and so who do you channel? Or do you channel many different beings or a particular being? I'm trying to get all the names, but I just don't remember. Whoever comes through just comes through. Okay, so it's just sort of whoever comes through in the moment. Do you are you aware after you're channeling? Are you a conscious channel or you go into deep trance with no memory? I try to go in deep trance, but I'm still kind of conscious. So okay. it's like half. And are you interacting with the being as you're channeling, sort of in a separate conversation? Do you do that or are you more just listening to what's happening? I hear them and then I talk. Yeah, but you're talking like in your head, right? Or yeah. oh, you hear them and then you repeat what they said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. So if you would like, we would be very happy if you would channel for us. And do you need any preparation time? Do you need anything? Uh, two minutes. Okay, perfect. We'll, 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 we'll relax with you. Greetings. Greetings. I am adjusting. All right. You're welcome here. Thank you for coming. I'm to Kerr. To Kerr. I've well, come to speak to this being for quite a short time. I have messages. Greetings. Greetings. Hello, Tikur. Thank you for coming. Hello. It has been a while. I've come to speak to this one about the energies of the Earth. It's been changing recently. From the poles shifting to the hurricane. We've come to speak to this because there's been unbalances. At this time, what we would like you to do is balance your energies the best you can. This one still struggles with that because his energies are all over the place. But it takes a while for me to adjust. But I've come to speak to you because these unbalances seem to affect certain people, you throws your energies off balance, off guard, to say. 
So, we would like you to ground yourself more. These hectic, almost, energies, spread them out. Let them flow. Because if you try to control these energies without letting them flow, it just makes the unbalance worse because it fights rather than flows. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Even this one has to let things flow more because I cannot come through fully. He's trying to go into a trance, but I'm still adjusting. Perfect. Tipka, we do have some questions if you're open for some questions. Yes, ask away. Okay, my first question, and this is just perspective, and then we'll go to Ruth. But are you, as you're coming, because we, we of course, know Tukar, uh, or you know you, Tukar, uh, through, through Jim and sometimes through other channels, but as you're coming now through Logan, are you coming through as a younger being? Or there you... is interference. Okay. Do you hear now? Yes. Do you, are you coming through as a through as you're coming through a younger being? Is this an, a younger version of you coming through, or is this the current version of you? That's the question. This is more. This is more of a spiritual elder version. This way. Yes. Okay. That was just the feeling I had, so I, I wanted to ask that question. Go ahead, Ruth. Go ahead with your question. Thank you. Hello, Tikar. This is Safira, otherwise known as Ruth. I have a question about grounding because people use stones to ground. They use their imagination to go into the earth. They meditate. What is the most powerful way to ground if you could if there's anything other than what those things that we do that I've mentioned. Hmm. Yes, the way to ground deeply is through minerals or crystals. If you would like to use more of a physical object to help you ground. Crystals, indeed, they're connected with the earth because, and good for grounding, because they have been there for long periods of time. They have natural energy with them. So, in a way, use that to your advantage to ground. Because you can take a long time to ground by yourself, but the crystals, they help you do it faster because they are connected with that natural energy. Use that natural energy to balance yourself when you are grounding. You see. Thank you. Are there any types of crystals like the brown looking stones or darker crystals that uh, coincide with the earth colors, or does it matter which kind of crystals? Hmm. Well, I'm getting Merkabas. Do you know what those are? No, I don't. Hmm. This one is them. They're more of like a star-shaped crystal to say, but... Oh, the Oh, the Merkaba. The, Mer the Merkaba form, you mean? Yes. yes. Yes, I'm aware of those. Yes, thank you. Rose quartz, amethyst. Possibly garnet. If you want, use more. The geodes and the round crystals. The quartz, they're deeply connected with the earth if you want to use those as well, but this one is getting the round crystals. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Steve has a question. Go ahead, Steve. Hello, Takar. Greetings. Hi, I had, I had a question. I had a very exciting uh, visitation last Tuesday. I wanted to know if you could use your network and give me maybe some detail about what I saw. Um, it was it, it was a craft that blinked in and blinked out in just a couple of seconds. Uh, it looked like a huge white fireball, but the outline of a, of a craft was inside of it. I'm, I don't know if that was a portal, but I wanted to know if you could give me detail of maybe who that was and how they accomplished uh, 
that appearance in the sky. It seems they were there to observe. They only did it for, yes, a minor or a split second, but we were getting somewhat of a malfunction or just to observe you. They seemed okay. to interested. It was much more of a reptilian energy, but they were just there to see how you were doing for a short sense of time. Do you see? Okay. My yeah, my son makes sense. My son is uh has some reptilian aspects, so that would uh that would make sense. He was with me. All right, thank you, Tucker. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions in the room of Jim? There's one here. Okay. Hello, Chikar. Who is that? Please identify yourself yeah. by your name. This is Erica. Thank you. Uh, so I was I had a camping trip in August, and I had a beautiful experience with the Lyran. Um, and I believe she's our new friend, and she follows. She's with me and my daughter, and I'd just like to know her name. I'm getting Elijah. Or Elizabeth. Elizabeth. I feel Elijah. Okay. And I heard the message from her just say, I accept, I accept. And I think she was saying just accept her friendship. She wants you to be who you are. Mm -hmm. If we feel that there are much controlling aspects over or around you. Mm -hmm. Relax, balance more mm -hmm. is what. She was saying. Okay. We feel that you have an unbalanced energy near you. And it seems that you try to balance your energies very often, but relax more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Be calm. Okay. And the unbalanced energy, what is that? Engine. Okay. We feel stress. Mm -hmm. And just unbalanced energies of the earth. Just we see that you need to smoothen out these energies. Mm -hmm. The more you locate the prop of, say, these stressful energies, or just an unbalance of the energies in general near you, mm -hmm. try to calm them out, to say, or just block them out, throw away. Keep those energies away from you so you can stay calm. And that is why she was saying, either accept, accept. Ah, to accept those energies, to say, let them be. Okay. That is all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have two more questions. Uh, Don, go ahead and ask your question. Greetings to Kerr. This is Don. Blessings. Um, last Wednesday, there was a, a belief, I believe it was an explosion detected near the, close to the moon. Can you elaborate on what happened there? Or if this is accurate? We are getting a malfunction. I am picking up malfunction. It may seem that, yes, there's one, it feels that there is a malfunction on the moon. It was handled quite quickly, though. Minor accidents and or injuries. They're saying that that is all. That is their report. Okay, thank um, you. Thank you. And and Trinity has also one one last question. Tucker, I'd like to ask about when you mentioned the Earth and balances, the Yellowstone National Park and Southern LA. Um, can those things be avoided, or are they imminent? And if they are imminent, how imminent? I mean, not exactly a day but is it like the next five ten years or is there any information we can get about that please understand this these things cannot be entirely avoided only because that the earth needs to go through these natural shifts as it already does the pole shifting they may cause some unnatural earth-like phenomenon 
to happen. But this is quite natural. Yes, there are some unnatural things about it, therefore human interaction, but for the most part, we feel that the Earth has to go through this naturally. Some things can be avoided. This cannot. Is there a time frame, like 10 years, 20 years, 30, 50? Is there any way to know that? We are getting 10 to 20 years. Thank you. Thank you. We don't have any further questions on our side, but uh, we would like to thank you very much. Would you have a final message for us or a blessing you can leave us with? We just want you to know, stay calm during these times of unbalances. Because the calmer you are to say, you balance out these unbalanced energies, therefore creating more of a safe environment. That is all. Thank you very much for your, your sharing and your perspective and for uh, teaching our Logan how to channel it better every time he does it. So much love to you, Takur, much love to you, Logan. Thank you for, for sharing your gift with us today and answering our questions. Thank you. I shall see you next time. Thank you. Blessings to all. <coughs> Blessings to her. Much love. Much love. Thank you. You back? Oh, I'm tired though. <laughs> you can feel you getting a little tired. Do you, do you need some water? You should maybe drink some water so you can ground a little. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sweating. All right. Yeah. Logan, that was awesome. That was awesome, Logan. Thank you for putting yourself out there. That was, yeah. So the right. answers were so simple but very deep. I could feel them. They're beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Young Very cool. Like young children, but young to her. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I like yes. I like when you yeah. said that. <laughs> he is learning how to grasp the energy and bring it in in a in a in a fuller way. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if anybody remembers his first channeling, but this one is much was much more deep and much uh more um uh, connected right. and so it was very good yeah it was very good we're gonna we encourage him to move forward yes okay so so now are you gonna there are me? requests <laughs> uh, requests out there <laughs> there are the requests let me go back to my list here one moment that i had made uh we had ishim of the oh gosh Temple, help me out. Mar Ishim of the something universe? It's the Ishim Collective. Ishim Collective. We had also Tukur. Uh, we had... Uh, who else? I've, I've lost everybody. I've lost the list. It's gone away. Oh, uh, Rujan. Rujan from Eighth Density. Yeah, Rujan. Also Ish. Ish, thank you. Yeah. So Ishim and Ish. What Ishim and Ryan. Maybe they're maybe they're friends. <laughs> yeah, Isham and Ish, and then Takur and Rujan. Okay. Very good. And um I will go into a little bit of a, a trance right now. Hey guys, could you keep it down out there? And and um we'll see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. Well, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Okay.
We are the Isham Connection Collection. Hello. Let us adjust. Yes. We are the community of the Isham. We know many ways to say it. Which way is best? We're not sure. <laughs> uh, well, maybe we should start with Trinity because she requested you. So maybe she has a question. Go ahead. Trinity. This is Marlene. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I uh, my first question is: You assist man, man's evolution and um, from the transition from three D to five D. Can you expand on this, please? When assisting mankind with this kind of an ascension, you must be at the soul level. Our community is based on higher energetic form relations and thought processes. We go directly to where we are welcome in the spirit. There are many on your world that are welcoming to positive spirits, but we cannot get through to those that do not welcome us. We must have an open opportunity in order to be able to manifest and bring about the, the changes that are necessary for your people. So therefore, we have been able to use many around your world as a resource for us and for you because we work together our energies will entangle and us being a different thought process than what you are used to this brings about a different kind of energy within you that rises much more quickly i am sorry that we seem a little confusing but our words are selected from a lexicon of human spiritual contexts. Um, thank you. Um, when I was speaking about man's evolution, um, what I understand that you come from the lowest molecular form of the Adamic body. Yes. Can you again expand on how this is done for humans, please? Through the DNA, it must be done through the DNA because DNA has energy of its own. You must understand God is made of many energies and the energies of the DNA are several and, and complex and they are in tiniest forms and they move throughout all bodies and they are the makeup of all things. So that is how we must work through those energies. What is the relation to the Adamic body? It is that all parts of the body, mind, soul, spirit, emotion are all connected. And so we work through these connections to move forward. Does that explain it? I would like to make it so that everyone can understand what we are speaking of. Does that make sense to you? Marlene, are you still there? We, we might have lost her. I'm here, I'm sorry, okay, I, was, I was muted. Yes, it makes sense to me. Um, however, um, can you add on to the Ad, uh, the Adam Kahneman blueprint? What is the connection there with the work and with humans? The what? The Adam Kahneman blueprint. Yes, there are, there are many blueprints for us to look at. We use a we use the spiritual contexts to look at these things. So it might not seem and as an intellectual byproduct of what we do. It is hard for us to describe how we connect to all things. 
but we work through the humans and through the connections of these things. The blueprint is there for us to use for perfection. Let me rephrase that. The blueprint is there in a perfect way so that we may see how to move. So therefore, it is used as a guide. Yes, understood. Well, thank you for traveling such a long way to speak with us today. I am sorry we could not be more clear. Our lexicon comes from spiritual documents and we do not learn the languages because there are so many. But speaking in this particular language, we have done the best of explaining that we can do. Our actions speak for themselves in many ways. And explaining ourselves is difficult at times. Please forgive. Thank you, but your your frequencies and your energies we can feel. So thank you so much for this, for, for coming this today. This is the most important thing for us, is that you feel our energy, know that our, our frequency is high, and that we are here for the best good. I see that there are still more questions in your mind, but we can see that. But you're thinking that we cannot answer them properly through this channel. Well, uh, not, I wasn't consciously thinking that. However, your explanations um, are clear and... Very well, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you and the questions that you have asked. We are just hoping that we are getting through properly. Thank you. I don't know if there's any other questions in this room. I don't see any, but I in... do. Okay. I have one. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead then. Trinity, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Hello, Isham. Um, I go by Safira. And I have a few questions, please. One is that I understand that in in order to ascend to fourth density beings, our third the third strand of our DNA needs to be activated. Uh, it sounds like something that very few people can actually achieve, from what I've heard. But in order for us to ascend and live in fourth density, is that DNA activated? after we leave this density or is it can we only ascend after the dna has been the strand no activated? you cannot have the this th fourth density in third density it does not appear it is out of phase it is not in your density once you reach the fourth density it is there and it is activated immediately but in third dimension, it does not even exist in some ways. So therefore, you must understand the fourth, fifth densities, the thought processes that go along with them and how they are working. Fourth dimensional energy is available to your world in your brain, in your thought processes, and in your ascension process, yes. Your DNA also is aware of fourth dimensional energy. The third strand, however, cannot be activated from the third dimension unless there is technological help involved. That would have to be from higher dimensions. And at this point, your world does not have that working for them. There is three people on your planet that have activated to some extent their third strand. But that is because it is necessary for their mission. And that is the only reason why there is any form of activation involved with it. Now, 
the young woman before that spoke about how we work with the blueprint. This is not part of that blueprint, but it will be part of it at some time in your later evolution. I see. Thank I see. you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, so another question. Another question. Um, is along these lines, uh, not exactly. When I sleep at night, I I try to invite fourth density beings to visit, communicate. Um, maybe what I can't see while I'm awake. But when I go to sleep, the dreams I have are so random and so chaotic, and I'm like, why can't the fourth density beings at least communicate through dream state. Um, I mean, I'm not asking only for me, there may be other people have the same question, but um, I, I, I'm frustrated wondering why is there I'm sleeping, I'm assuming that my mind is not, my mind is not busy with all kinds of stuff. So I'm sorry, go ahead, please. Information comes to you when it is necessary and when it is needed. Perhaps some of this information that comes in a chaotic state is not for you to understand quite yet. Even though you wish to perceive many different things and understand thoughts and processes beyond this normal life that you live on third dimension, not that your life is normal. I am not just saying that, but I mean beyond a normal third dimensional existence that mm -hmm. is different yes but it will become clarified once it's needed right now you are going through changes and thought processes that are actually encouraging you to move forward you are expanding yourself and the information that you are gathering has to be done carefully so that it is put in the proper perspective and not lost. There have been times in your past where much information has come to you, but it was lost because it was not processed properly. This time in your life, they would like you to process the information as quickly and as accurately as possible. And that means that the outside realms, the third dimensional realms are speaking to you first and then the fourth dimension will speak to you to clarify the, the direction of your mission in that way. Do not be impatient. There is much for you to learn, but you are very gifted. And so do not rush yourself into a great transition period, for it will be in your best interest to go more slowly. Thank you. And one last question. Does do, do beings on other planets, when they pass, when they transit, transition from one form to another, one density, like we when we die, we go from physical, like our spirit is released to spirit world. Do they have like a spirit world that they go to? Is it different from the spirit world that humans go to, <laughs> for example? Why would there be a separation? All beings go to all beings that are from realms go to their realms. All beings that are from God's creation, spirit, go to that realm, and angels go to theirs. They everyone has a place that they go, but all species, humans included will go to the same realm after that their energy has left their body and will mm -hmm. unite in a great energy field beyond. They will have their own sentience and consciousness and will be able to understand God in a more clarified way. But he cannot create too many realms so this is how he will deal with all species is to bring them to a place where they can understand him in a greater way and then move forward from there if they choose to do so 
Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope we are clear. The clarifications can be difficult. Thank you. Oh, no, this was fine. Thank you very much. Excellent. We don't have any other questions in this room. I don't know if there's questions in the room where you are. I have a question. Barbara. Okay. This morning, my well, I felt like I was in a different dimension, but that's not what I want to say, but I felt different about the time frequency. It's like, seems like time wasn't important to me. So I don't know what that was all about. Very good. We understand this. There are times when humans wake into a, a place of timelessness, a place where things do not exist the same as they did before. This is a spiritual awakening of sorts to let you know that there are other things outside your third dimension that are important to you. And you are just connecting to an energy of greater understanding. And as you were in inertia, as we will call it, you were also learning from that inertia that you had traveled somewhere in your, in your dream state and had been somewhere outside of yourself. Well, I have another question. I keep getting this buzzing in my head like it's a swarm of bees buzzing. Is that just tendonitis or is there something going on other than that? No. Usually these kinds of sounds can be related to visitations of some sort, but they can also be physical anomalies of uh, less healthy uh, status. However, in this case, it was that you were visited with uh outside insectoid beings okay thank you you're welcome thank you there's no questions any other questions i have a time? question okay. this is lucia hello ahead, lucia. Lu thank you for coming i have a question about being in the zone of passion so many beings are telling us to follow our passions, be ourselves. And my questions, or my question, has to do with what, how is it affecting our DNA when we do so? Is it somehow um, stimulating that third strand of DNA? Thank you. As you become more of yourself, your DNA follows suit it becomes more directed toward who you really are and what you are to, all about. Your mission is who you are. It is not that your mission is outside of yourself, but your mission becomes internalized. And as you live your life, your mission is part of who you are and becomes your passion, becomes part of your positivity, becomes part of that which you embody. Does that make sense to you? Yes. I'm just wondering, is it stimulating that third strand of DNA? It is stimulating the DNA. And it is also reaching into that part of the DNA that is out of phase because you are evolving personally but it does not activate the third strand necessarily. Who you are is born to the third dimension, and the third strand is not born into that dimension. You can become fully who you are and fully engrossed in your mission and passions without ever activating the third strand because it is not necessary. God did not make it necessary for your mission to be completed. I see. Thank you very well. Thank you for coming. Thank you for that question. It was insightful. Um, there's another question uh, in the chat 
uh, around around the third DNA strand. And it's yes. Udimanch uh, would like to know, are more people going to have their third DNA strand activated? And the question is, what can he do? But I, I guess it's general. What can one do to to further activate the DNA? If Very anything. Well, that is an also insightful question because it does have an answer. You see, God. God has created each individual to create to be a certain person and to follow in a certain way their greatest good, their highest interest, their passion, as it was stated earlier. Now, there may come a time when more energy and more talents are needed beyond what the third dimension can offer. These would be dire times. But God would actually activate third dimensional or fourth dimensional a DNA to help with these dire times if it was necessary. Follow your passion do what it is that makes you who you are, and perhaps you will become even more useful than God once intended you to be. Thank you for that. I don't see any more questions. Is there any other questions in your room? I do not think so. Okay. Well, I will bring someone else it Thank was you. a pleasure to speak to you and i hope that we learn your language better for next time much love to you and please feel welcome to come back at any time thank you for calling on us much love to you Greetings, this is Ish. Hi, Ish, how are you? I am very well, thank you. Welcome. And how is everyone there? I think ready to ask you lots of questions. Thank you for showing up. Oh, did, did the screen light up when I come in? <laughs> With smiles, yes, yes. Excellent. Yes. I will be happy to answer your questions. Uh, Ian requested you, so Ian, why don't you go ahead? Sure. I've, I've just been reading the wonderful book, the, the From the Galaxy with Love, a Lightworkers textbook, and I got to the part about hybrid children. And Ish, I was wondering if you would be, if you knew whether or not, if, whether or not I have a hybrid child somewhere. Um, actually, you have just, you have just recently agreed to have one. For the longest time, you were very hesitant to become part of the hybrid program because it was something that you weren't sure that you would want to be involved with, actually. But just recently, within the last few months, you have agreed to give your a DNA for this project. And so, yes, you are now going to have a hybrid child. You do not have one yet. Wow, you're pretty accurate on that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> any other questions? I don't see any other questions in the room. If you have a question, please let me know. Is there any questions in your room for Ish? Any questions? I just had a statement. Uh, thank you for coming, Ish. We miss you. We love you very much. Oh, thank you very much. I have one and other question if there are no more. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, you you know about the sleep disorder that I have, and I had another episode where I was asleep for two days. Did anything unusual happen in astral while I was gone for two days? I, I think that I'm probably the only one that can tell you this. <laughs> but because, because I know about your dreams, about your sleep state more than anyone else, 
you seem to go into a state of real darkness, black, and you don't remember any of your dreams, but you know that they were there. Is this correct? That is true. But you don't have any recollection of anything once you come out of your sleep state. Uh, except for maybe some dreams just before I woke up, but they're usually... Exactly. Yeah. Those are usually the benign ones that have no meaning. Correct. So, and yes, you go into a very deep astral travel. You are doing work very far away. And this is why you have been asleep for so long. It is that you have uh, a mission in your astral that it is that is very dire and you go very far away. And that is why you have to stay asleep for so long. But this is coming to an end and this sleep state will end. You will not have this much longer. It will be uh, completely gone in about six months. Okay, that's good news. I've been dealing with it for about 15 years. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. But no one knows what you're doing. It is time to reveal that, but not quite yet. Okay, please let me know when it's time next time we talk. Yes, you have a great, you had been doing a great mission. Also, you are starting to feel that you're coming into a more third dimensional realm and moving out of your uh, illness, if you will. And you are becoming more active and more um, aggressive in your thought processes about what you want to do at this point. And you're, uh, you will find that there are many things for you to do very shortly. And you are already doing things, but there is even more. Okay, great. That's also as well because I feel better now than I have in many, many, since I can remember. So I'm feeling Absolutely. fantastic with a lot of help from you and the, and the Elohim. Absolutely. And we know that. So thank you very as much for the healing. We already know that. And, and no one's really spoken to you from this area. Not lately. No. <laughs> So thank you so much for coming through. As you know, I'm one of your biggest fans. And I am a fan of yours as well. Thank you for persevering and moving forward. Great. Much love. Much love to you. I have a question. There is a question in the room. Sure. Go right ahead. Question. The energies that are around right now, are very disruptive and really affecting a lot of people. Can you like talk about that a little bit? The disruptive energies. Did everyone hear the question? Yes. She was facing away from the computer, so I wasn't sure. Yes. There are a lot of disruptive energies. There's the uh, grand solar minimum from the sun. There is the earth who that is Mother Gaia is really purging much of the things that are within her to get all the energies that are necessary for this time on your planet uh, working again. There are galactic energies. There are energies from all different places for your world. Now, not everyone is feeling these energies. Not everyone is subject to... Uh, them in a great manner because some of the some of you live at higher altitudes and and if you're at a higher altitude these energies don't affect you as much they still do affect you a little bit but not as much but and at the at the sea level and slightly above a lot of this rumbling goes right around the earth and right around and affects the 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 top 30 or 40 feet of the atmosphere, depending on where you are and your elevations. But the thing is, it's very disruptive to many people who are very sensitive to this kind of thing. And if you are doing a mission and are very sensitive to this kind of uh, disruptive energies, with the grand solar minimum and all those things, because everyone will be affected by that. Uh, but... Um, 
just keep yourself grounded. Keep yourself positive. It, and I know that some people feel like they're actually being attacked when these things happen to you. It's not necessarily an attack. It's the energies that are just very disrupted at the, at the moment. Keep yourself grounded. Keep yourself positive. Start uh, reading something uh, lighter, something more uh, positive. Watch something on television that's funny or positive. And, and just try to keep yourself out of those uh, big shifts because... If you can avoid the big shifts, then you're in good shape. Okay, perfect. Thank you. There's two more questions in the room. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Dave is first. Um, I wanted to ask, I recently channeled Jesus with a practice group, and I wanted to understand if it was a good channeling, because when I was, there were certain questions where I felt like, there wasn't any information coming through and uh, um, they said they felt the energy, but I just felt like it wasn't. Perhaps you were not connected uh, all the way. There are times when there are pauses in a channeling session. There are those times when um, perhaps that information cannot get through for a reason. So do not just give yourself over to the channel. Give yourself over and allow the channel to be as strong as possible. There are times when the channel will not be able to get in touch with you in a pure or, or strong connection. So do not worry about that. If they can feel the positive energy that is coming through, you have succeeded in doing what you are, were meant to do, perhaps at that time that message was not to come through it was premature or they could not know that answer at this time oh uh, this is why not i was channeled and i was positive i felt positive do you remember you like right yes? right there he's saying and he he enjoyed the channeling from from jesus and david and oh. it felt positive yeah. for him he said. yeah that was nice thank you Okay, no. just wanted to mention. Thank you, Reinhard. For okay. And there's another question in your room. And that would be Barbara. Barbara. Yes. I've been told years ago that I was being visited by light beings for training, teaching, etc. Can you confirm that? Uh, yes, I can. Many people on Earth are being trained by light beings and by energies they bring you can understand them through channeling sessions you can understand them through the people that you are contacted by in the alien realm and the spiritual realm and you think the spirit coast is not a light being yes of course he is so yes you are definitely being trained and taught by spiritual and light beings now, can you tell me what am I being trained? You are being trained that you are holding light. You are being trained how to hold it better. You have problems with anger occasionally. Okay. You have problems with uh, a couple things. And they're trying to even you out. They're trying to bring you into a place of greater health. But that anger keeps your health a little shaken yes, up. Too. Working on that. And you'll you are you have come through great great difficulties but yet you have some expertise in healing you have expertise in uh some understandings of spiritual thought processes you have expertise in light languages so therefore you have come a long way you you just have to realize how far you have come many people do not have not come as far as you have now, there's another question. I forgot it. Oh. That's okay. okay thank if you. you think of it, then ask. Okay. Is there any other questions? Yes, we have, several, we have many questions, actually. Um, so we, we have only about 30 minutes, so I'm going to ask everyone to keep their questions to uh, one question, and if they need, need be a follow-up question, so we can get through all of them. 
Okay, Lana has a question. Go ahead, Lana. Greetings. Lana? Uh, greetings. Greetings. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. Oh, oh, oh good, good. Yes, thank you so much for being here. Um, my question has to do with, and my passion has to do with children. Um, and I, I'm also like Ian reading the book and admiring how your society is um, organizing around them and, and, and attending to their needs and providing the, the proper environments. And um, I have a feeling that, that it, it is true and, and, and I feel the, the vibration of love that, that you have towards those children. Um, and maybe my, my concern is more here on earth right now. And I, and I have uh, been wondering if you can maybe shed some light about the situation that is happening here in the United States, how the children are uh, defenseless against the government forces right now and how people have such uh, a short attention span and they care about it one day and then forget the next day. And I just wanted to know if this has always been going on there or if things are getting worse, if we're getting the right news, can we believe that that news that we're getting? Um, and what is really going on? Are there really that many children? Um, and, and if yes, then there is many things going on with children. As you look at different, the United States and different places in the world, it is that go. Oh yes, yes it's it's everywhere in the world. But I feel uh, the person wherever they live at the moment, if the uh, treatment or mistreatment is happening right then and there. It's the responsibility of that person that lives in that country to, to do something or at least think yes. about it. Absolutely. And um, information is not correct about many things. There is a lot of false news around the world, and especially in the United States. But it is to cover up, uh, some of it is cover, covering up very good things and some of it is covering up very bad things. Now, they've gotten into this um, idea that they can just say whatever they want in, in some regards to sensationalize the news, to make it more interesting so they can sell more, so they get more viewers, so that they... You understand that the newspapers are starting to go under because of media online and uh, television shows and the news being showed there. So the news departments are trying to sensationalize as much as possible at this time. And uh, they take a little bit of information and they can make it into a lot of information, which is not good. And um, it is definitely very speculative. So you hear about all these terrible things that are happening some of them are and some of them aren't so it is hard for you to be able to tell what is right and what is wrong in your media and i it to be in this place looking down it's hard for me to sort out what is what is being said from what is the real truth and the the real truth is that in some cases children are being well attended and in other places, they're being very poorly attended. But to point out all the different places for these things would take a lot of time. But you're right. There is some areas where help is needed, but it is no one even knows some of the places that help is really needed. And then there are other places where help is needed and none is being given or very little is being given because the funds are here, the funds are there, the, this is going on. Uh, uh, there's so many things that are drawing the attention of the people that it's hard to focus on where the real needs are. 
Yes, that is very uh, unsettling, yes. Uh, so it's unsettling for me to look down and see this, but I to explain it to you is actually impossible at the moment. Yes, I, I'm just um, trying to restore peaceful relationships around myself, around my own community, and um, I do see how people just really not, um, you know, I, I don't even know how yes. to say it, but they, they just not, they, <laughs> they, are not, they are not responding. Yeah, yeah, really zombified. Let me, honestly, yeah. This, let me tell you this, and this might, I'm not sure if it will comfort you or frighten you or whatever, but there are th things coming that will wake people up, and they will have to take a stand, and they will have to take a side against uh, uh, to be good or to be, to be helpful or the, or not to do it anything so they not doing anything is a decision you understand that mm -hmm, if you mm -hmm. decide not to decide it's a decision mm -hmm. yes so there is a time coming when people will have to decide and they will be will have to say i am for the good or i am not mm. Yes, yes. I, I, yeah, I, will, I will look for the signs of that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And yes. It's sort of frightening. Sorry for that. Uh, Sheer Thank has you. a question. Go ahead, Sheer. Hey, Ish. How are you? Greetings, Sheer. I'm fine. Um, I have are... um, a strange question, so please bear with me. Uh, of course. <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, when you look at the world, you see more and more countries uh, legalizing uh, cannabis. Just this week, Canada is fully legalized cannabis. And I'm wondering if you can see a prediction when is it, if and when is it going to be in Israel? Because there's a very, there's a lot of movement towards it, but there's still many that are uh, trying to live the situation the way it is. So can you give me a prediction or where do you think things will go well, in the next few years? I think most places will legalize it, but only because then they can profit from it. And also it's very unhealthy and it's, uh, it makes people lethargic. It takes away brain cells. It's not actually a good thing. I mean, it can be used uh, wisely uh, for enlightenment and different things, but that's not the way it's being used for most of the world. So I'm seeing that the legalization of this cannabis is actually just for profit for each and every country, and they probably all will legalize it if it's not legalized already. Or they will put controls on it so that they can make the money. They don't want it to be underground anymore. They don't want the black market to be making the money or or street people to be making the money. They would rather have it in their own pockets. And they would rather um, uh, legalize it than uh, do anything else. Also, I, I don't see that it will be very long before most countries who do not have it legalized will legalize it so they can profit from it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, Trinity has another question. Please keep it to one question. Yes. Well, oh, Ish. <clears throat> I haven't asked you a question yet, but thank you. Um, I have a theory. I had a theory last night that there is mind control being used against us, especially here in America, because um, when certain words are said, like the name Trump, there is an irrational response that is so intense sometimes that it doesn't make any sense to me 
I understand people can be for and against certain things or behaviors, but for me, it becomes irrational. Not for me personally, but I see irrational behavior. So then I had a theory that there is mind control being used uh, to create a great division in this area. Is that uh, is that true, or did it, was that just an imagination I had? It. Let me tell you this: this division has been coming for a long time between Democrats and Republicans, and once it has. Re reach this extent, it's very polarized, and so in order for the Republican Party to maintain a uh, their, their side and the Democratic to, Party to remain in their side, they must take a stand for their party, whether they like Trump or not. Now, there is mind control to a very small degree but it's mostly from the press. It's the mind control is coming from information. It's not really coming from waves or from things of that nature, but it's coming through the, the media. Your mind control is telling you what to believe. This person's good or this person's not. This person did this, this person did that. They're emphasizing if you go to one station, it says one thing, if you go to another station, they're totally opposed to, to what the other station says. And this is the mind control that you're talking about. If there was any other kind of mind control, you wouldn't even be able to talk about mind control because you would be under the mind control. So um, <laughs> understand that you have free will still and that you're able to think about mind control, and if there is mind control, it's in the media. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Temple has a question. Go ahead, Temple. Hi, Ish. It's been a long time. Greetings. Uh, my question is, so for the last three weeks, things have really changed for me. Uh, not only have I been sleeping all the time, but my normal channeling communications have changed and my uh, alien neck spots have returned. So I'm just wondering if you could give me a little bit of um, an update. I'm guessing that it's some sort of DNA activation, but um, just a little bit more specific update on what's actually going on, if it's like traveling for missions um, further off or what's going on would be great. Thank you. Just, just before this period of sleeping and you went through a great deal of information changes. There was a lot of information that came to you before this particular period. Is that not true? True. That is correct. So now they are taking you and putting you in a state for you to process this information in a greater way. They are also uh, uh, checking you and clearing you. You have to have a clearance for the next portion of your astral travels. You have to have clearance for that and they're making sure that you're ready for that. They are also readying you for a greater part of your mission that will take a lot more energy. Okay, excellent. So it's kind of a lot of things combined. And then is there, uh, like the, is there DNA activations in there as well? Absolutely. Okay, and is I just have I just have one more question. So every time that happens, I get um, like my lower spine gets this bizarre um, um, thing that shows up on my skin. Is that will that always be my sign that I have these activations coming in? The well, DNA yes, yes, and no. You might get used to it, but okay. at this point, yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Next. Are there any questions in your room? Was that all the questions? No, it's not all the questions, but I have a lot of questions for the chat, but I want to make sure that everyone is in the rooms so have had their questions answered. So There's one question here. Okay, please. Um, is this a, a yes or no question? I'm experiencing an extreme shift. Is that correct? Correct. Thanks. All right. Go ahead. I have a quick question. 
Erica has a question here. Okay, please go ahead, Erica. Getting the message that um, I'm going to be working with children. Um, is this the, when the hybrid children come? Am I going to get an opportunity to help them? You're already helping them in the astral. Okay. You're working with astral children on Polana. Polana gets a lot of help right now. Okay. And uh, they have several different astral children, uh, many different places there. Uh, it's actually the hybridization planet at this time. It's going to be fully given over to that uh, for hybrid children at, at some point. And so, yes, you're already working with children, uh -huh. but you will be working with them even more. Okay. Yes. Do you know what I'm doing? Um, not yet. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, there's two questions. Uh, okay, thanks, Trinity. Okay, there's there's two questions, one from Elga and one from Krellick. They have the same question. Um, they want to know about the YouTube shutdown worldwide on October 16th. Krellick says people says there were uh, there was a viral video of a military officer claiming the moon was going to be attacked. Was the moon attacked? And then Elga's question was what was the, she wanted to know what was the reason for the worldwide YouTube shutdown. All right. There was an attack on the moon. It was small. There was also an attack on a station out in Saturn. There was also an attack on somewhere in Mars. These were all uh, from the same place. I won't go into that. But there, e even if someone had announced that there was an attack on the moon, they would not have pulled that off because they would not have shut down YouTube for that reason. The, uh, because nobody would really care if anybody attacked the moon. So um, it would not be a, a great top secret. If somebody attacked the moon, you're going to say yes or no or uh, big deal or wonder why. And, and so you, won't, you wouldn't attach any top secret information to that. There was something else that was said during this broadcast that was something that was a military uh, strategy that no other country could hear about. So that had to be pulled off. That had to, and the only way to get rid of a video off of YouTube is to shut down YouTube and pull it off. They had to pull, shut down YouTube, pull it off, and in this particular instance, the information that they were trying to pull off would not, would not be removed, uh, was encrypted uh, to seven layers. And so they had to unencrypt this. They had to bring in the military to unencrypt this uh, military announcement. And... They open YouTube back up. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, there's a question from Michelle. She's saying, I've missed you so much. Can you please speak wisdom to us, understand the importance of self-love as the highest form of relationship we ever get and the practical ways to achieve that? Yes. What Self-love is becoming who you really are. To actually respect yourself to be happy, want to be happy, forgive yourself, learn about yourself, to, but not to be selfish. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the things that make you most happy, the things that bring you joy. And let me tell you something. Most people enjoy helping others. Most people enjoy giving love. Most people enjoy being compassionate and sharing their wealth with others when they can. This is not selfish, but it brings great joy. So keep that in mind. If you volunteer somewhere, if you do something good for something, this brings to yourself a great amount of joy and energy. Now, there are those out there that are thinking, well, what's making me happy is money, and what's making me happy is possessions, and what's making me happy is my girlfriend or my boyfriend. But remember, these things are all included in 
becoming who you really are? Is this something, what is it about these things that build you up? What is it that you can do with these resources that can make you happy? There are a lot of people that have lots and lots of money that are not happy. There are lots of people that got money uh, a bad way and that do not enjoy it. There are lots of people that pay for love in some ways. They try to buy people, but they are not in love. Remember, Try to find all those things within you that make you who you really are. Who are you really? And those are the things that will make you happy. Those are the things that will shine out through you and show the world that you are well balanced. Because you, God made you for a, a, a purpose. God made you in his image and made you each unique and gave you each certain gifts. You may have similar gifts among you, but none of you are exactly alike. Thank you. And I could go on and on about describing this, but I know that we have limited time, so I will move on. Okay, Lining has a question about the energies again. She just says, going back to the question of the earth energy, Will it get worse before it gets better? And when is it likely to pass? Or is it an ongoing thing? It is ongoing for now. It's not likely to pass soon. Because you're going through a great amount of change. And for a great amount of change to happen, it takes years. So you will be in this energy. You've been in it now for more than a year. And you're going to continue to be on it, in it for another more than a year. So, uh, and also I want to say this, yes, it will get a little worse, but just be positive, gather your positivity and you'll be able to move through it in a greater way. Okay, thank you. Um, Patty is asking about three strand, strand DNA and she just wants to know if it's a good thing, the th third strand of DNA. Maybe she doesn't quite there know what this. Let me tell you what third strand DNA does. I'm, I'm sure we're getting a lot of questions about it. It's out of phase with third dimension. But when third strand DNA becomes active, your eyesight becomes better, your skin changes, your there's a lot of things that happens with third, third uh, strand DNA. Your IQ goes up, other areas of, of the brain are opened. I cannot tell you all the different areas because um, I don't want people seeking the third dimension, the third strand, just so they could have extra power. So, but I can tell you this it's not likely to open up for you unless God sees fit that you have, He has increased your mission to a greater level. Perfect. Thank you very much. And then there's another question from uh, Salem. He's asking, he says, when the cabal do sacrifices, this is kind of a dark question. My cat, my dog's trying to hug me. Um, when yeah. the cabal do uh, their sacrifices for supposedly Satan, what purpose are these sacrifices and who were they really made to? Also, are they connected to symbolism in Hollywood? Yes, no, and yes, no, all these things. Uh, let me tell you this. The Cabal has still does, there are a few members of the Cabal that still believe in these sacrificial things. Mm -hmm. Most have grown out of it because money is more powerful than the sacrifice. They can get more with their money than they can with the sacrifice. The sacrifices are used to get power. Mm -hmm. And with many of these cabal people, they have as much power as they need. So they sort of are moving away from these sacrifices because they find it a little gross. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are still some that, that do it. And the reason that they do it is because uh, they're af afraid not to. I see. They were taught that these are these sacrifices were made if they do not 
do them, they themselves will become possessed and they they would rather sacrifice somebody else and not become possessed themselves. So this is, they they were taught very fearful things. Uh, but some of them are, are, are passing through this and saying, well, I have enough money and I don't even care about possession anymore because it's I can probably buy my way out of it. But there are still a few that believe that this is something they must do. Um, they do it to a uh, uh, an entity that claims a, a superior position in the universe, mm -hmm. and that is a lie because they do not have a superior place in the universe. They but they would want you to think that they do, and they will continue to tell people that as long as they are unchained. So all things exist because you created all things. God did not create everything. You have creative elements within you that with the great power of your brain, you can create. So with a group consciousness, you've created a devil, you've created many, many things, and it it just happens the way it happens, and it can, you can call it down from heaven, you can create a story behind it, you can do whatever you wish with it. So, did I answer that appropriately? I believe so. Thank you very, very much. And um, we have time for one more question. Ruth has one more question. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Um, Ish, who was walking all over my bed last night? <laughs> I, I want to ask this uh, because I have to go to bed again tonight, and I just want to know who's walking all over my bed. <laughs> that her, I can't name, her name is Gala Galora. And she is a an elemental. I see. Did she just check me out or waking me up or? No, she likes walking on your bed. <laughs> is she connected to me because I have some elemental history? Yes. She didn't think you'd mind. Oh, okay. Thank you Gala, very much. Just say, Gala Galora, I need you to get off the bed so I can sleep. And she will. Okay. Thank you so much. That's very calming. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, I have a question. A question in the room. So, Ish, can you give us the numbers to the lottery? No. <laughs> and if I could, which I can, I won't. <laughs> okay. All right. For the people who don't know uh, worldwide that are watching, the lottery in the in the U.S. right now has reached 1.6 billion U.S. dollars. So yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Play number eight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Ish. Um, everyone is sending you much love and greetings, and much love to you all. And I have and have a wonderful day. Thank you for calling on me, and I will uh, someday. Talk to you again. Thank you very much. Much love to you. Much love. Much love. Ah, hello? hello? Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Logan. Owen has come down. Say hello, Owen. Hi, Owen. Hi. 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 This is Owen. He's nine. He looks really like Brian. Look at him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're beautiful so, boys. Beautiful yeah. boys, Brian. Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank <laughs> you. Oh, thank you. So we talked about it just um, we talked about it just a little bit, but uh, it uh, just to remind everybody that uh, there is a book that's written by Jim and uh, Max, and it's called From the Galaxy with Love: A Lightworker's Handbook. And it's a wonderful book. You can get it on Amazon.com. You can buy it as a PDF or a PDF download, or else as a as an audit um, audit audit. What is a book? Audio book. Thank Audrey, you. Yes. 
audio book. And uh, if you do read it, please leave a review because, and everyone who's reading it really, really likes it. So please check it out. Yes. I'm getting a lot of very nice comments about it. And yeah. I, I even had one person say, I got done reading it and I didn't want it to be over. So that oh, was there you the go. best comment I had gotten about it. And they go, I was sad that I was done reading it because they, they thought it was very positive and beautiful. So Another thing, I'm a very critical writer, and it is written very well. I, I was surprised at how well it is written. So it was superb writing. Oh, thank you. So, well, I didn't do the writing, but I did the channeling. <laughs> so just for everyone that's watching, uh, please be sure to click the subscriber uh, button if you haven't done it uh, already. Our subscribers are going up and up, but the more you subscribe, the more... Other people out there on YouTube will find us <coughs> and, and be able to join our Hukalo family. So and if I love you all and I thank you for coming. Who's next? Who's coming next week, Karen? Uh, Ruth, Safira. Oh, oh right. yeah. yes. Uh, Safira, known as Safira, Ruth, Rory, Trinity. Um, she's got a lot of names. Any other aliases? Yeah, we don't know. She, yes. Yeah. So yeah. she will be there next week. Yeah, she'll be there next week. And yeah, and we, I, we'll find out when you're back. Uh, you have to let me know when you're going to be back in November. I, I, okay, I think we'll talk. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that this week. Okay, perfect. Okay. okay, so for everyone else, thank you very much. This has been the Human Colony Hukalo Saturday webinar. If you would like to become a member of Human Colony and be able to be in the room on the paid webinars as well as have access, first access to all of our many programs, go to hukalo.org forward slash webinars. And for $10 a month, you can support our many activities. Uh, the money is going always to uh, paying our... Uh, and for our YouTube and, and our website and things like that. So thank you so very much for, for mm -hmm. all of you who help us stay afloat. Yes. Yeah. So till next week, we'll see you again. Brian, don't be a stranger. And Logan is back there. And Owen over here. Yeah. It's really wonderful to have him in the house. It's nice good. To see you guys. So, so much love, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Karen. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Here Karen. We go. Thanks to everyone who's helping. Don, I know you help a lot. And Don helps a lot. I always forget to thank him. I always send him a message after and say, I forgot to thank you. So Don, who's monitoring the YouTube channel. And I know that uh, Safira is doing a little work there, too, sometimes. And everybody's helping. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much. And thank you to, thank uh, you. yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Right. Much love. Bye-bye.